Hi everyone, this is Jay Johnson with DailyTexture.com. In today's In the Digital Studio video, I'm going to work on a photograph I just uncovered in my stash that I shot a few weeks ago. And it is this Blue Jay photograph. Um, this is a one I chose to put as a stock photo on my stock photo website. And I just really love how cute this is with him holding this little acorn. The problem is, um, I mean, it's fine for a stock photo, but for a piece of art, he's got too much busyness around him. So what I'm going to try to do is to bring the focus to him using the textures and backgrounds we offer. And this is happening right now. I have no idea of what backgrounds I'm going to use. I'm thinking about um, to simplify this, I need to blend away a lot of this background. But because he's got little pieces of grass here uh, coming up over him, I can't totally obliterate the grass or it won't look right. So I'm going to have to leave some of the grass in there. So I'm just trying to decide which direction I'm going to go. I think the first thing I'll do is I'll just pull open a texture to use as a background and I'll go ahead and do the masking and then I'll go from there. So I'm going to open one of the textures. Let's just pick one from the monthly mix package here. And he's got blue in him, so I'm thinking blue. Um, this one looks kind of fresh. And it has little grassy pieces in there. Let's just mask away using that one as the background. So I've put the texture underneath him. And I'm in Topaz Photo FX Lab. And I'm going to mask away his entire background. Really big brush at first. Very strong opacity. Full opacity, actually. I'm just going to... Get in as close as I can without going over his edges, and then I'll make a smaller brush. All right, now let me blow this up a little so I can see it better, and so can you. All right, let's go with a smaller brush now. Get in here a little closer around his edges. All right, that part's masked. Get in a little closer here. Obviously, I want to maintain all the detail of his mouth and the acorn. And I'll bring back some of this grass that I'm masking away now. I'll bring it back because it, I don't want him to look like he's just stuck on there. I just want to see what kind of background he might work with. So... I'll do this often. I'll pick one for a background and then totally change it. All right, let's blow this up a little further. Get in a little closer. So like I said, I want to maintain all this detail right here. So we're going to go with a little smaller brush. We're going to get right in there along the edge. Like so. Across his back. Down these feathers. Up in here. Gotta have that pretty tail feather in there. And then around here. And along his belly. Not to worry about his feet because where the grass is, I'm going to bring back some of that. Up under here. Now, if I want to maintain these little feathers right here, I'm going to turn my edge aware tool all the way to the right. Move the slider. So when I get in here, it should pick up some of these edges without going over them. And right here as well, I want to get completely completely, very sharply around the edge of the acorn. 
and we're still going to have to go with a smaller brush in here. <clears throat> I'm at a uh, 0.02 brush now. I'm going to have to go down to a 1 to really get in there tight. And make sure I get around that acorn. And his tongue. This is his little tongue here. There. Now I'm going to move the edge aware tool back and I'm going to fit him to the screen and see where I want to go from here. I kind of like this texture for the background. And let's try to enlarge it a little and move it. I'm going to get some of these streaks right here. Maybe up near him or I can move him down. Let's try moving him down. I see some areas I missed there on the mask. I see some little white areas, so I'm going to, on his layer, do a little more masking of this area where I'm seeing those white spots. Now let's move him down a little. And I can see an edge right here I need to mask when I did that. I'll just go all the way around the edges again to be sure. Okay. <clears throat> That's looking pretty good. I'm going to bring back some of this grass now just a little bit. So I'm going to lower the flow. Do a real big brush and just tap a little in here. Like so. And now I'm going to get some of it gone again right here where I got a little too far out. I haven't done any editing to his layer. At this point I'm going to go over the tail just slightly. I'm going to bring a smaller brush in, still at the low opacity. Just go around his head to soften that sharp edge right there. And the acorn. I want to keep it very sharp. But I just need to Tone down the sharp edges a little bit. Go right in here over the beak edge. You don't want to lose the acorn or the tongue or anything like that. Let's see here. Now let's go back this way. Bring back a little more of this and see where I'm at. Okay. And put it back. Back and forth, back and forth. I'm just tapping here. All right, I'm going to do a little editing on him. I have done nothing. Um, I'm going to denoise him first, or maybe I have already done it. I have already done this. Never mind. I'm going to try to boost his clarity a little more. Just to see. Boost those feathers a little bit. I'm clicking OK down here at the bottom. Uh, that made that a little dark, so I'm going to undo that. Or maybe I'll redo it. No, I'm going to undo it. I liked it a little softer. Okay, <clears throat> he's got a little grassy standing in. There's some little streaks right here in this texture that I chose that kind of look like grass. But he needs some more grass, but not too much. So I have some packages. Um, I have to find them. Let me see where they are. In the painted backgrounds. Wildlife Masterpieces. We have some grass in that one. That's Wildlife Masterpieces 1. We have some grass in Wildlife Masterpieces 2. And not only that, but we have the grass overlays, which may work good here. Let me try some of the overlays. Now that's a little too much, but if you um, bring the size of it down and kind of position it, still might be a little too much. Let me try a different color of the overlays. 
Let's try a tan. Oh, now that looks much better. So let me see what I want to do with this. Let's move it around a little. I don't want it totally coming up over his body. But a little bit in there. I may resize it down to fit a little better in this area. Let me duplicate it, which makes it a little darker. Let's flip it around, which gives it a little more interest and let's make this one a little bigger just so we can show Chris Crash blades are different sizes okay that looks kind of interesting I think turning these off I think right here needs to be a little darker I think I'll do a little more masking bringing back some of this right here Whoop, let me get on the right layer. A little bigger brush. There. Now let's go this way just a little. Back the other way. Right now let's turn these back on. I'm still on his layer. I'm just masking away some of his original grass very gently, but still showing where he's standing. Go up around here and soften him up a little bit more because the edges look a little sharp to me. Let me blow this up and look at the acorn area in the face. See that's a little sharp on the edges there. So we're going to go with a smaller brush right in here and just kind of soften that up around the beak. And then we're going to go back the other way. I get this set. I'm trying to set it on one so I can bring back some of the beak but at a low opacity and the acorn and this part of this beak bottom beak now this is blown up you know really really big nobody's going to look at it this closely once it's a piece of art to hang on the wall go back down here bring back some of that that's a little better it's not quite as harsh <clears throat> all right maybe bring in another color of grass from this wildlife masterpieces to the grass overlays could bring in a blue just kind of interesting this is art, so I can create anything I want. If I want blue grass, I can have blue grass. That uh, might be too much, though. For, let's see. Actually, let me go to the background and pull one of the actual backgrounds here. See how that would look behind him. Oh, that looks very nice. And, that, of course, that already has grass in it. And then, of course, you can lower the opacity of it and create a blend of the two, which is, this is a little strong here, but once you lower that opacity down to about 50%, it softens it nicely. It's got a little difference. See, this is before, and this is after. Kind of like that. Maybe resize him just a little bit. Make him a little bit bigger to fit in there a little better. That looks kind of nice. His grass around his feet may still be a little bright. So let's uh, mask away on his layer some more of this around his feet and where he's standing.
No, I masked away too much, I think. Bring some back. Let me bring more back. See what that looks like. And then go back the other way. Soften it just a little. It's hard when they're in the grass like this to get the right, the perfect mix. I think his bottom side needs to be darkened a little because there would be a shadow here. Let me first let me bring back. I mean, let me uh, yeah, bring back some of this foot where he's actually standing right there. Now let me go to the background that I set at 50%. I'm going to set it full force. Turn him off. Now that looks pretty good, but when I, oops, moved my layer by accident. When I lower the opacity of it, the grass part looks pretty good there. Actually, let me resize this a little. Because there's a dark area in that texture, which if I can position that around his feet, that will make more sense. Okay. Before, after. That looks better, but I still think it's too harsh up here, but I like the ground. So on that texture background layer, Wildlife Masterpieces 2, I'm going to mask away softly some of this sky, which will blend in the other texture underneath it. Rather than change the opacity of the whole thing, that way I can keep the grass level at full opacity, but I can soften this upper level. See how I've done my little mask on just on the top? And it's just very soft. So it just softens those clouds a little bit. So, okay, this is before, and this is after. I like that. Now let's pick a texture for the top, possibly. So let me see what I've got. Not one of these. Let's go. I love the Illumination Collection right here. It's one of my go-tos for throwing light on a subject, creating some nice um, color, dramatic light. This one looks pretty good. Let's try this one now in a different layer mode. I like what this has done right here, throwing light on top of him. I think it's too yellow. So I'm going to pull the saturation down. See what I think. And it's darkened the bottom too much. So I'll play with the opacity here. Just do maybe a... 30% just throws a little light on his head right there. See, all right, let's try another one. Let's see what else I've got in here. Everything but the kitchen sink. This, this one could end up being. Let's go with, let's try this one. See what this creates. Multiply, overlay, soft light, hard light. Let's see, overlay, soft light, before, after, before, after. I kind of like what that's doing. It's giving it a nice little glow overall. Still a little too yellow down here, so I'm going to pull down the saturation on that layer. I really like what it's doing to his face. Still a little too yellowy down here. And then pull the saturation all the way down. Or almost all the way. Maybe lower the opacity of this a little. To about maybe 60%. Before, after. I like that. Let's see what else I can do. Let's see if there's anything else I can add now. I may be overdoing it at this point. Let's look at the Unleashed Watercolor Textures. See if any of those will do anything. 
Here's a blue one. I don't know what these will do. These will maybe mess it up. These might be fine underneath him by himself. Just out of curiosity. I'm going to shut that layer off and I'm going to merge all of this that I have done by clicking from stack. And I'll play with the watercolor one too in a separate design. Okay, so that is all merged together right here in this layer. Now I'm going to go grab his mask layer and put him on top. And turn this on. And just see with the watercolor texture what I could come up with. Of course that watercolor is a little bit too blue. Lower it. I don't know. I think it still looks too busy and I really want to bring the focus right here. So this, I don't think the watercolor texture is the right choice. So we're going to go with this one that I'd already merged and decide what to do with this. If I want to add anything else on top. Uh, let's see. Look at the winter ones. Winter impressions. Let's try one of these. Just see if it does anything. May not. It's a little too rich. Well, that looks pretty good. The soft light layer. But I think it's taking away my light from up here. So I'm not going to go with that. I really like the way this is looking up here right now. It just gives it a real nice softness that I like. Let me duplicate that layer and how about do a little topaz impression on it. I have an oil paint filter I really like. It helps to smooth out if your subject's a little bit too noisy and even though I denoised him, I still think he's got a little too much noise. And I'm in topaz impression one which is still my favorite. I have two but I don't use it a whole lot. Oil glaze light. This is one of my favorites right here. That really gave it a boost to color. Smoothed everything out. Then I have oil glaze light too, which isn't quite as colorful, but smooths everything out. I kind of like the color there though. Maybe a little too much. But that's okay. I'm going to click OK and go back and I can adjust the opacity of it. See it's a little too yellow. So I can combine the two and have just a little bit of the oil paint filter on there. This is before and as I bring it up you can see it getting yellower. Let's try maybe around 50% opacity or 49. That's before, that's after. It just softens everything just a little bit that filter. Now it is a little bit too saturated. Down here I can pull the saturation down but then that messes with his saturation which I really liked. Let's see. I don't know it's still boosted quite a bit. Boosted up a little more. Maybe 70 percent with the saturation pulled down a little on the oil paint layer. That looks really nice right there. I like that. Now one thing I'm not liking here is I have a area where I have a lot of big grass pieces but not a lot of fill in right there. So I may bring in, go back to Wildlife Masterpieces. Let's see, I might have to, here it is, Wildlife Masterpieces 2 and get that tan overlay again. And that kind of fills in a little more right there. Kind of helps hide his feet a little bit better too. And if I didn't like it over the tail so much, I could mask it away. But I, I kind of like it where it's just showing a hint of his tail right there. Yeah, I think I'm going to keep that overlay on top because it filled in right here. This is before and you can see these big gaps 
from the previous grass layer. Now by sticking another layer on top, I have filled that in. I like that. Let's merge it all from stack. Now, I'm going to duplicate it again, the merged one. One thing, though, if you look at it from out here, further away, it's real bright right here down on the bottom. And I think that needs to be darkened a little, because that would be darker, naturally. So I'm going to go to Topaz Lens Effects and play around with a graduated neutral density filter, which I can darken on the bottom with this and see how much I want to go. This is before, see how bright that is, and this is after. And then I could do even more, which will come up higher, which is too high. Um, let's try the two stops one, and then I can mask, since I duplicated it, I can mask some of this off if, I don't, if it's too dark. Or I can lower the opacity. See, this is before, and this is after. And if it's a little too dark, I can kind of go in the middle with the opacity. Or I can just mask off the top, leave it at full opacity, and I think I'll just mask off the top. Move the flow up a little bit. Really big brush. Keep the brightness right there at the top where he is. But leave a little darkness on the bottom, see? Before, after. I might want to... Uh, whoops, go back the other way with a lower opacity and bring back a little bit more darkness right there under him. But leave the top of the pieces of grass the lighter color as if they're highlighted. Lower the flow a little bit more. There. You could even lower the opacity. I like that though. Now let's zoom out. So this is before darkening the bottom. This is after darkening the bottom. I like that. I'm going to merge it and decide if I want to do anything else. Okay. So I'm deciding whether I want to do anything else to him or not. You may want to try to boost the, duplicate the layer, the merge layer, boost the clarity on just the bird. See how that does. I know I did this before, but that was before I ran the oil paint filter. Now I kind of like that on the bird. I don't like it boosting it so much in the background or on the grass. So I'm going to click OK, and then I'm going to do one of my favorite things to do, which is invert the mask, meaning it's going to put a mask over the whole thing, and then I can just bring the clarity back on the bird. So invert took it all away. Now moving my sliders all the way this way, getting a nice small brush. I can actually go in here on the acorn, on the beak, tongue. I see how it's putting just a little bit there. I'm bringing it back the clarity adjustment on just the bird. Now I'll do his head very strongly because that's the sharpest part of him, so I want that to stand out. And then I'll lower the flow, get a little bigger brush when I go on to the body. So it's not a full clarity adjustment here, it's just some on his back and his belly a little bit. So see, it's got the shape of him in there. Now, turn it off, turn it back on. Just boosted up his sharpness and clarity a little bit in this area, which is the area that's most important in the area I want to stand out. So let's zoom out. I like to look at it from a distance, and I like the way that looks as far as lighting. The darkening down here, I like that. I can see, I can tell what it is pretty much from far away, that it's a blue jay with something in his mouth. 
Then as you get closer to it, I can see it's an acorn. There we go. I like that really well. I don't think I want to do anything else to it at this point. I already have a title for it. When I saw the photo, the, the word uh, treasure hunter popped into my mind because that's what he was doing. He was digging in the leaves searching for these acorns and he found one. And he just held it up so pretty. Now let's go back and pull up, find the original photo. Pull that back up on top. All right, that's the original photo layer. Let me get rid of the mask. All right, so that's his original photo where you can see how busy it is all around him. And you have to really look closely, especially if you have vision like me, to see that he's holding an acorn. In fact, when I shot the picture, I did not know what he was holding. I actually had to look at it later and blow up the picture so I could see. I knew he had something. And now, with this piece of art, he is separated from that background that busy background like this and the attention is brought to him as far as what he's got it's a lot more impactful this way and i do believe the name of it i will call treasure hunter so this will be up on my art site today anyway that's today's in the digital studio i hope you guys enjoy watching it seeing my work process and how i think about these things and I hope you guys have a great day.